Hello, good people, and welcome to Finest Skills Hub. Here, we learn, we connect, and we grow. If you're a regular Excel user, you are probably conversant with how to use pivot tables to create summary reports and provide analysis to your end users using Excel dashboards or charts. But did you know that with just a little more DAX calculations, or measures we call them, you open up a lot more options and possibilities with the kind of calculations you can do in your dashboard. For example, you can calculate same period last year directly to compare two values year on year. You can calculate year to date, month to date, quarter to date. All these options are possible with just a simple calculation. So we are starting this new series to help you learn how to use DAX in Excel. So if you are game, let's take our first case study and do this in the next few minutes. Okay, so we start off with this simple data set. It's sales data. It contains countries, products, units sold, the numbers are here. Okay, now for this particular table, towards the end, apart from the generic date column, we have some extra date attributes here. Well, you can choose to keep these date attributes, but a better way to handle the dates will be to create a dedicated calendar table. Right, it allows you to have your date hierarchy with all the levels in there. Right now, we could actually delete these directly, but we can use Power Query to do that. That way, if there are changes in the data source, Power Query will take care of all the updates, and then the step is also recorded. You don't have to do this every time, every time the data changes. Right, so the first step we are going to do is to load this into Power Query. This is already a table. So you see the table design is here. The name of the table is called financials. I'll come to data. In the get and transform group, I have some icons here, different data source connectors. I'll use this one from table or range. So basically it's just loading the data and then putting it in Power Query. In Power Query, we can make transformation or changes to our data set. Okay. So what we want to do here is go all the way to the end. We want to add the step of removing the date attributes to our transformation steps. So I've highlighted these three. I'll right click and remove these columns. Okay, that step is added. Then for my generic date column, I will format it properly as a date format. That step has also been recorded. Now for this case study, what we want to do is give the user the ability to break down or filter by date and by country. It makes it easier if these are in a specific dimension table. So we want to create a country dimension table with just a unique list of countries and then a dimension table for dates with all our dates and the hierarchy, right? So to do that, I'm going to reference the original fact table. So referencing means you are creating a connected copy. Okay, from this, we are going to extract our country table. So I select the country column, remove all other columns. That leaves me with just the country column. And then to get the unique list, I'll choose remove duplicates. Okay, then I can name this countries. This is going to be used as a filter in our analysis. Okay. I can also create the calendar table from here using an M code, but to help with the learning, I'm going to do that rather in Power Pivot. So with just these two tables, I can now load it, come to close, close and load two to give me more options. Now, I'm not going to use table. I don't want uh, another table in this workbook. So I will hold it as a connection in memory and then add this to the data model. Okay, so the moment I do this, what is going to happen is that those queries are now going to be tables in my data model okay, in Power Pivot. So in Excel, the moment you commit to the data model, you have now activated the Power Pivot environment. It's usually a tab that sits as part of the regular command tabs. If it is not available, you can activate it for the first time coming to data. In the data tools group, you see this icon here, go to the Power Pivot window, it enables it, then you have access to Power Pivot. Now in Power Pivot, you can create your data model, 
you can create your measures, you can create your date table or calendar table. To go to that environment, we'll go to manage. Okay, so I'll click on manage. Now you see that I have my default tables here, the financials and countries here. Okay, I want to add the calendar table. So to do that, I'll go to design. And then you see this date table here. I can use this to create a new calendar table. If I click on it, automatically it scans my data sets, picking the start and end. You need to be careful when you are using this. If it has a day that is an outlier, that's where it's going to begin from. So always check to be sure that the timeline it has given you actually reflects the transactions, particularly in your fact table. You can always reconfigure by coming here and then updating the range. So it tells us that it starts from the 1st of January 2013 to 31st December, to 31st December 2014. This works for us. Now, aside the data view, you could also switch to the diagram view. So in the diagram view, you get the option to see your tables presented in this visual display. Okay, so my financial table, which is my fact table, is here. All my columns are in there. Okay. Now, basically, what we are going to do is that we want to connect these tables by creating a relationship between them. Okay, so for countries, it will connect and break down financials using the country column. This is the unique list. This version has the duplicates because there are a lot of transactions. So I'll connect these two here. Okay, now these two are going to talk. Dates is going to connect to dates. So same way. This, these are my primary keys. And then the connecting parts here are my foreign keys. All right, so our data model is done. In Power Pivot, you could actually exit directly and create a pivot table from the data model. It just means that we have access to use all the columns in here to create a summary report. Okay, so I'll create my pivot table. I'm going to create it in a new worksheet. Okay, now this is my pivot table environment. To my right, you see my tables. Some of the tables have an orange cylinder icon. These tables represent the tables we took through the Power Query to the data model, and then that's what we are going to use for analysis. The one without the cylinder icons, this one is the original data. We are not going to use that one, right? So know the difference. Now for our pivot table report, we want to be able to break down our sales by date. Okay, so I'm going into my calendar and then drag my date hierarchy into rows. This gives me 2013 and 2014. Okay, now while I'm here, I want to see my sales. That is what I'm going to use as my values. This is my sales column. Okay, if I drag it here, it's going to aggregate and sum it for me. This is what we call an implicit measure. By the nature of the values in there, it takes advantage of the pivot table environment and then it calculates the sum of sales for me. I could have directly created this with a measure using my DAX in Power Pivot. But for this purpose, this works fine. Now, if I expand this okay, into month levels, uh, you realize that it starts calculating all the way from September to December. Okay, Then January goes all the way to December. These are the monthly sales, right? I want to, let me format this. So right click, number format, come to number, use thousand separator, reduce this to zero. All right, makes it easier on the eye. So I have this. Now let's calculate year to date. Basically a cumulative sum up to the end of the period. Okay, so in our case, the end of period is December. To calculate this, I'll go to power pivot. In my measures, I will start a new measure. So I'll click on a new measure. This is my dialog box. The table name is my home table, which is financials. The name is going to be year to date sales. Okay. And then I'll put in my formula. So this is DAX in Excel. There are very powerful DAX functions here. The one we are going to use is called total year to date. Okay. Now it's going to do the job we are actually expecting it to do, which is just cumulatively sum all the way to the end of a period in our physical calendar. It needs an expression. Now that expression is the sum of sales. Okay, if I had it as a measure, I would just put it in here. So at this point, I will use sum, okay, financials, 
sales financials is the table sales is the column so i'm basically summing all the sales in here so after bringing my comma i have dates filter and year and date so dates is my calendar okay so i'm going to put in calendar and then the original date column so calendar date now if i use it this way it's going to assume that my cutoff is 31st december right we'll come back and see how we can use the third and the fourth arguments but i'm going to close this for now and then check my formula everything is fine format this as well use a thousand separator reduce this to zero so that it conforms with my earlier format now because i was already in the pivot table you notice that i now get the year to date sales added as a new value field so it starts from september calculates all the way and then it cuts off in december okay then it resets and then starts calculating in january all the way to this one as well to make it easier for you you can use a conditional format as data bars i'll come to home conditional format data bars okay so this one actually shows you that it's rising okay so that is how you use your year to date sales now how do we use a third and fourth argument so to go back to our measure i'll go back to power pivot go to the measures and then this time around i'll go to manage measures i have the option to edit my original measure okay so over here basically what we're trying to do is introduce the third and fourth argument now the filter can be a dimension table you want to use to break down your calculation or limit it to a certain criteria or attribute so let's assume that we're calculating for only mexico the year to date sales i can bring in a country dimension table and then limit it to just mexico so i'll call country or countries which is the table okay and then the column is country is equal to mexico so that's will be my filter and then i'll bring another comma this is the option to adjust your fiscal year end so the original behavior is that it cuts off on the 31st of december but let's assume that you your fiscal year ends on the 30th of september okay you can make that adjustment so here you just need to bring a double quote starts with a month number which is 09 dash the day it ends so 30th okay so all this in double quotes and i'll close my bracket so we've applied the third and fourth filters here if i check my formula everything should be fine I click ok and then i'll close this so the expectation is that it will now calculate for mexico and then make adjustments to the fiscal year end date to 30th september right now you'll notice that the numbers are not the same because the original sum of sales is not filtered by mexico right i can now apply a slicer on this so i'll insert a slicer here on countries okay so if i now click on mexico we now have these numbers matching but the unique thing here is that because the cutoff is september you realize that september ends on the same notes but october starts calculating okay goes all the way to september okay and then it resets in october right if you chart this you get better insight so let me just apply a pivot chart here so i'll go to insert and then insert a clustered column chart here okay now let me revert to the original calculation without the mexico inputs okay so i want to revert to so that it's easier for you to understand what i'm going to do okay so we know more how the filters i expect it to update automatically and reset okay so let's assume that our year end now is 31st december okay in this chart we normally use year to date to check the rates of growth especially for our sales okay so if i have this chart i can add on some elements like a trend line just to calculate the growth rate Okay. to calculate the growth rates i would like to format this chart a bit so i'll come to the tabs here and then remove all the fill buttons okay 
And then in the field list, I'll take off the generic sum of sales. I'm left with only this one. Okay. Now, if I remove these extra elements, I have some extra space here. Okay. I can come to design and then add a trend line. Okay. So this trend line, I can use the exponential. Now, the basic idea is that I want to be able to compare the, the rate of sales growth across the countries. Okay. So if I add this trend, select the line and then bring control one. Okay. I can actually have the equation here. Okay. Just to compare the growth rate for each country. Okay. So let me just increase this. Okay. So basically for year to date, we are interested in how sales is growing from beginning of year to the end of year. Right. Because we already have the option to also filter by year. Okay. I can just reduce this to 2014. Okay. So the 2014, I can now fairly compare for Canada, France is 19, Germany, and all that. You realize that with just a little bit of DAX, you are able to give your user a bit more insights. Okay. So don't just settle for a generic paper table calculations. You can use these DAX functions to give you more insights. Apart from that, the same period last year and all those DAX functions will cover in the subsequent section. If you want to learn how to use Power Query, Power Pivot, DAX, and Q functions to analyze data in Excel, I encourage you to get this book, Data Modeling with Microsoft Excel. It's a comprehensive guide with practical examples on how to use all these tools to create an interactive dashboard. And that is actually your capstone in the book. It's available on Amazon. You can order directly. But what is important for me is that you practice and add all these to your Excel tricks. If this video was helpful and you would like to receive more of these videos directly on your WhatsApp, you can send ad to this WhatsApp number. We'll add you to our broadcast list so you receive our videos directly. You can also visit our YouTube channel, Finest Skills Hub. All our old videos are here. Please subscribe for notification of new videos or connect with us on any of these social media handles. Thank you so much for watching.